The following is an edited recording from a live video broadcast. Image and audio quality may vary. So, from your perspective, what would be considered the ultimate Star Wars collectibles? And this doesn't have to be toys either. This could be anything. So, off the top of your head, old son, what do you reckon to be the go? Okay, well, I, I've, I've talked about some things before. What are the best toys ever produced? And in the top 10, the Millennium Falcon has got to be not just Star Wars, one of the best toys ever produced for, for boys growing up. Just because kids have already got the figures, it's in scale with the figures, it has so many playability things that cross over from the actual movie. They put in the gun with someone sitting upside down. They put in the smuggling compartment. They put in the training ball. There's a lot of really good stuff kids love in that. That's why on the secondary market, it's one of the still one of the most popular toys. I would say the most notoriously um popular star wars collectible ever is of course the rocket firing boba fett. boba fett i mean again it's it's always one of those things it's always out of reach when it was sort of first discovered there was prototypes and star wars figures were going for ten dollars that was going for thousands way out of my price range when star wars figures started going up in value and they were going for hundreds of dollars I had an opportunity to buy one for twenty thousand, and now a hundred thousand plus for one of those really ones with providence. I agree with money bags on this one. Any of the hero screen used props would be the ultimate Star Wars collectible, and I that's actually quite a very important point because there was a lot of props made for the movies. Some of them are a bit more rarer than others. Uh, you can imagine someone saying, "Yes, I've got the original Luke, Luke Skywalker saber from uh, Jedi." There's a million billion stormtrooper suits and blah blah blahs running around, and whatever. But you want stuff that was done in limited numbers. And I will show the picture at the end as to what I think is the ultimate Star Wars prop. It's just absolutely spectacular. But prop hunting in terms of collectibles uh, would be the, the main go. And for me, myself personally, I think the ultimate would be the big Star Destroyer model they built for the Empire Strikes Back. I reckon that creams everything. But that's, of course, that's a one-off. And that'd be spectacular. What, what, about the, what about the original Death Star they found that was being used as a waste paper basket sort of? <laughs> <laughs> the Death Star is boring, though. It's just the ball. The one from Jedi is far more exciting to look at because there's all these bits missing out of it, which is particularly cool. But, I mean, clearly that's off in a, in a different stratosphere for, uh, you know, the average person on the if, street. So if, yes. we're looking, if we're looking props and I could have one original prop and it was just something, I'd go for the original IG-88. It's not going to be the most valuable prop like a Darth Vader costume or something. That was always a droid I absolutely loved. So that would be if I could have one prop, the original IG-88 standing in the corner of the room, it'd be pretty cool. Very cool. So you mentioned the Millennium Falcon earlier. Anything else on top of that? So the, does the AT-AT walkers fit in alongside that or is it just not really? So I think if we're, well, they do. I mean, it's if we're looking, I, I was thinking more about toys when you said collectibles like retail available stuff. If you go through star, stuff like that, there is, it, it really is, I guess, everybody's aesthetic. I I think the Millennium Falcon is the best toy ever. I probably prefer the Attack because I like the Empire better than I like the, the Rebels mm. just in, in the movies. Like some of the poster art would be amazing to have. Imagine having an original an original artwork rather than a print or something. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen that in Steve Sansway's place. He had original Ralph McQuarrie pictures uh, on the wall. And you look at it and go, hang on, that's not actually a print. That's the real thing. What about this? The very first handwritten draft of Star Wars. Oh, yeah, imagine that, eh? So that'd be very, very cool. Uh, yeah, there's some, it depends on what you what what's your forte. You know, like your forte primarily is toy based items, and yeah, you are right. The top of the food chain is the rocket firing Boba Fett, and below that, then you got your vinyl cape Jawas and whatever else, and it goes from there. Uh, and then yeah, if you're into posters, that's you know the original one sheets when they first came out. The first poster ever produced for Star Wars wasn't a one sheet at all. It was given away, I think, in the 1976 Worldcon. Yeah. And that is worth millions of dollars now. So there you go. And, and that there's pictures of that where I think it was ten dollars, and they reduced it to two dollars because they couldn't sell the damn thing. And who's there selling it? Mark Hamill. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of funny. Mark Hamill in 1976 was an absolute nobody. Fast forward two years later, he was the coolest kid in town. So absolutely awesome. But yeah, it just depends on what you like. And uh, but I was having this discussion with someone recently, and we were talking about props. And that's the reason why I have narrowed down what I think is the rarest prop in the entire Star Wars universe of all the 11 movies and TV series. It has to be, right? The cup that Luke drank out of. Just a piece of shit Tupperware, right? But 
Whoever has this cup, let's assume it's still around, just assume for the moment it still exists, it would have his DNA on it, Mark Hamill's DNA, Luke Skywalker's DNA. It had the, the original official blue milk in it. Mate, screen used, held by Mark Hamill. I reckon if you could guarantee that was the real deal and you had it in your collection, you would be able to buy your own Death Star out of that. So uh, that has well, got to be the coolest collectible in the history of history. Well, I'll stick with my IG-88. But did you know a lot of the props, especially of the bigger stuff, they just left. Um, so people would, for years, yeah. would be able to go out to the desert and pick up the crate Dragon Bones because they just uh, left it there and it was only painted one side. Or you could go out into, was it the Yuma Desert where they did the yep. skiff and they blew it up and they just left all the all the parts there so you can go out and dig, dig up some sow barge. Uh Yep, totally true. Uh, Russell has said, and I agree with you. Just think at the Worldcon, uh, fans would have, uh, some of them would have thrown the posters out because at the time, Star Wars was just a big button. Who gives, a, who gives a crap? And I bet those people are looking back thinking, I had one in my hand, didn't want it, chucked it out. I mean, the artwork is okay. It's nothing spectacular, but it's the rarest poster of there because it was the first one. So, uh, well, the, the um, thing is, you've, you've got to remember, even after Star Wars came out, no one knew that the cultural impact and longevity the, the movies would have. They used to give away stuff to be auctioned for charity and it'd be an original C-3PO hand or, you know, they'd yeah. just go down into the archive and, you know, pull a piece off the Death Star and say, send that out to the Muscular Dystrophy Fund or, or whatever. So there was really at that time... Um, no real foresight. They were still seeing them just as movie props that are quite disposable. We've seen the footage of you visiting the ranch and going through stuff. And I think you were really lucky because you're at a stage where that stuff wasn't religiously worshipped as it is now. And you could just try stuff on and touch stuff, which there's no way anyone would be allowed to do yeah. that now, would they? Yeah, yeah. I've actually had confirmation that uh, the archives are off limits. So very, very cool. All right, guys, we're going to buzz off, leave you to it. And as I like to say, may the dark side of the force be with you. Is that right? Well, I, I guess so. Everyone's got a little bit of Sith in them, haven't they?